Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice the radio, so today I am bringing you news of another exciting new card coming in the Pokemon trading card game in Lost Thunder. It's a new tool card, and, and I must confess, when I asked David this, it, it seemed like a mick take, but it's actually called choice helmet now to be fair choice band in japan isn't actually called choice band but if you follow the rules of language that have made what choice band was in uh, japan to what choice band is over here choice band then this card should be called choice helmet when it comes over i hope that made sense this is the kind of thing that david hockman who of course has given us our translation would be far better at explaining than i so i've called it choice helmet what does it actually do well what it actually does is it reduces damage done by your opponents ex and gx pokemon by 30. it is literally the inverse of choice band Choice Band means you do an extra 32 EXs and GXs, and Choice Helmet means that you take 30 less from EXs and GXs. It just gives you a bit more bulk and a bit more survivability. Now, there is one very, 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 very important point when we're comparing Choice Band and Choice Helmet. And it's something I've spoken about a lot in relation to other cards, both tools and stadiums, it is in your opponent's control. It is not in your control. So with Choice Band, you're sitting there and you've got, I don't know, let's say a Mamoswine because Mamoswine's awesome. And you're facing down against a Buzzwall. If you add a Choice Band, you will do an extra 30 damage. Now, maybe next turn your opponent plays a Field Blower to get rid of your Choice Band. So you only get the extra 30 damage on one turn, but you get that extra 30 damage guaranteed. Whereas Choice Helmet, it actually translates more to Choice Met, but probably going to be Choice Helmet. It's in your opponent's control. They can play their Field Blower before they attack, removing the tool and then doing the damage, so that you don't actually get any benefit at all from playing it. It is up to your opponent. Your opponent has the choice as to whether it is still attached to you when they attack, Whereas with Choice Band, you put it on and immediately use it. So instantly, we've got to compare it to Choice Band, right? Both in name and in terms of 30 damage and EXs and GXs. Clearly, there is a huge similarity here between this and Choice Band. But the big difference here is that your opponent can make sure it doesn't do anything that's a huge issue. I mean, we've actually, and no one's playing it at the moment, like I haven't seen it in a single deck list, but we do have Lysander's Lab, which stops effects of all tools, meaning that if this were played, your opponent wouldn't need a Field Blower, they could just play this down, and even though you would still have a Choice Helmet attached, it wouldn't actually do anything. No, ladies and gentlemen, that's a big issue. So now that we've got that out of the way, and said that it is not the same as Choice Band, and it is in your opponent's control, and that does suck, is it any good? And essentially, the answer is yes. Simple as that. There are many, many good things about this. There's also quite a lot of previous cards we can compare this to, to show that it's good. So Eviolite was a very good card for a very long time, saw a lot of play. You would attach that to basic Pokemon, and they would then take 20 less damage from attacks. Good card, saw play. Now Hard Charm didn't see as much play, despite the fact it was basically the same card, but it didn't have to be attached to basics, but we're in a different format. And we saw cards like Primal Groudon take advantage of that, and it did see a bit of play. Even more recently, we've had bodybuilding dumbbells, and actually, this could be better or worse. Now, bodybuilding dumbbells is only on a stage one. This is to any Pokemon. So just on that basis alone, there's a huge advantage. But Bodybuilding Dumbbells gives you an extra 40 HP, as opposed to Choice Helmet, which reduces damage done by 30. 
Now, if your opponent's just hitting you once, then essentially this gives you 30 more HP, bodybuilding dumbbells gives you 40, and is therefore a better card. However, let's say you're against something like a Buzzwall and they're using Jet Punch. Well, this actually means that Jet Punch does nothing unless they use a damage modifier like Diancy Prison Star, whereas Bodybuilding Dumbbells means that they still do the 30, you've just got 40 extra damage. So if your opponent hits you twice, Choice Helmet essentially gives you an extra 60 HP, whereas Bodybuilding Dumbbells always gives you an extra 40. Having said that, if we look at something like Poison, or attacks from non-EXs, non-GXs, I don't know, Baby Buzzwall, then bodybuilding dumbbells is better, but again, bodybuilding dumbbells is only for stage ones, whereas this is for any Pokemon. And essentially here, the question is, does it help you with the numbers? And the answer a lot of the time is going to be yes. So let's say for argument's sake, you've got a Lapras. Lapras has 190 HP, and let's say you're going against a Buzzwall. Ordinarily, Buzzwall sits there with Knuckle Impact doing 160, so they add a Choice Band and they get a one-hit KO. Let's say now you put a Choice Helmet on Lapras, and post-rotation, when Strong Energy rotates, all they're going to have is Diancy Prism Star, meaning they can not actually KO you. They can do... 210 damage, but you've essentially got 220, you'll reduce it down by 30, they do 180, you've got 190, you survive the hit. But now we get to one of the other big downsides of this card, Lapras also does 160 damage. So if we reverse it and see that there's a Lapras attacking a Boswell, you need a choice band to get a one hit KO on them. And this is when it all starts getting just a little bit awkward. Because actually here, it's not just the fact that your opponent can play a field blower and you do nothing. It is the fact that when you play a card like Choice Helmet, you are giving up the opportunity to play a different card. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is very, very awkward. You're giving up Choice Band. At the moment... Generally speaking, you either have a choice band to do an extra 30 damage or a float stone to give you free retreat. And sure, there's a bunch of other tools out there like the aforementioned bodybuilding dumbbells, but they generally don't see play because it's float stone, choice band or bust. So essentially, we're looking at choice helmet and going, right, if you're going to see play, this is going to have to be better than Choice Band. Flowstone's rotated out at this point. We've still got a skateboard, but it's it's going to see play, but it's not going to be anywhere near as good because it reduces retreat by one rather than making it free. The good news is it reduces it by one and, and you can retreat if you're asleep or paralyzed, but the bad news is no. It doesn't actually give free retreat, and a lot of decks is going to be pointless. And that's essentially where we are with Choice Helmet. There's no debating the fact that it's going to be a very, very good card. If you can get it to stick. We're in a GX-heavy format at the moment with cards like Buzzwall and cards like Zoroark. I mean, take something like a promo Tapu Koko. You're sitting there spreading 20 damage to each of your opponents every turn. And to be honest, you don't really need Choice Band there. You're spreading enough damage without it. Zoroark of a Full Bench gets a one-hit KO. Choice Helmet comes out. Now they're not getting a one-hit KO. They're hitting a maximum 90. It's a good card. It will save you getting KO'd. It's very useful, and it's better than bodybuilding dumbbells, and it's better than hard charm, and it's better than Eviolite, and all of them have seen play or been talked about as decent cards in the past. It has got potential, but there are two huge issues here. Number one, it's in your opponent's control. They can just play a field blower. Number two, if you play this card, you give up your chance to play something like Choice Band, and I'm not sure every deck is going to want to do that. So I'm giving it free wassies. I do expect it to see play. I do expect it to get teched into some decks. But I don't know if I can really sit there and go, you know what? It's amazing. Because I'm not sure it's ever going to stick for long enough. Or going to be played over other tools. 
but there's potential. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to know what you think about this card, so do let me know in the comments section. Go nuts, but as always, there is a very, 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 very important rule. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wussy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can do exactly that. And do check out my other channel, Wussy Plays. Today we uploaded a video about very important Dragon Ball Super news. I think you should watch it. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.